All right, what's going on guys? T Torres back here for another video. So in today's video, we have a very exciting install going on. I'm getting the PRL Big Turbo installed at the actual PRL headquarters. So big shout out to everybody at PRL. Thanks for having me up here. And what I'm gonna do is Steve is gonna go over all the parts that come in the kit. So pretty much you're gonna, uh, we're gonna review as if the packages have come to your house, you know, directly as it would in most of your all's cases. So Steve is one of the mechanics that I am going to be working beside and we're gonna do this turbo install together and try to give you guys the best content we can for step by step. So if you were to do this on your own in your garage with another buddy. So let's get straight into the install. So like I just mentioned, uh, Steve is gonna go over all the parts that we have on the bench and Steve's gonna give you just a little quick synopsis and overview of what he does here and how long he's been with the company for. Hey guys, I'm Steve here at uh, PRL. Um, I do a lot of the mechanic work and R&D, uh, small product design. Um, we're gonna go over turbo kit here today. Tyler uh, has been nice enough to let us do the install on his car. And uh, we'll get started here. All right, we've uh, unpacked all the stuff that you would get in your turbo kit. And I'm gonna go over a quick overview, uh, sort of how, so you know what components are what, where they're going. So we'll start here with the silicone. Um, this is going to be the hot side silicone pipe. It adapts the turbocharger kit to your factory wastegate or your factory um, intercooler pipe. And then these three items combined will be the new intake. Uh, this is going to go from the turbocharger inlet, and then your MAF will be over here. Basically, completes the circuit. Here we have all your clamps. Uh, very similar how you should be able to get it in the mail, straight out of the box. We have some OEM gaskets here. These are going to be all the exhaust uh, gaskets and hardware. Tyler has a boost controller. This is extra, but most people will have very something very similar to control boost. And this is your blow valve or bypass valve. Uh, basically, when you close the throttle plate, this is the valve that vents the uh, positive pressure uh, back out of the system. All right, um, here is a bracket that's going to go on this intake pipe I showed you earlier. That will basically hold, uh, mount to the cylinder head and then mount onto the ceramic coated pipe there. Um, this bracket, I'll just do this since we're here. Um, that's going to go to the heat shield. It'll bolt onto the turbo compressor cover here that I'll go over in a minute. Here's uh, your turbo exhaust manifold studs and downpipe studs. And then we have some assorted vacuum line zip ties. Here's all the coolant lines packaged in one bag for you. Uh, some of these hard lines will go in the turbocharger, others will go in the cylinder head. I'll show you that later. Here is our exhaust manifold adapter. This interfaces the factory cylinder head outlet to the T25. And this is going to be your wastegate hardware bag. This is the wastegate actuator and a little bit of hardware to mount it. Basically, this is going to be your oil feed line and drain lines. This will, again, interface with the, the engine and or turbo kit. This is going to be the feed line. This is the drain set up here. And then finally here we have our, uh, this is the downpipe that we make in house. This is going to be your new heat shield. Cover everything up, protect the car. And then this is how you should receive your turbocharger. Uh, we have that our, our turbocharger supplier will already pre-install our wastegate uh, bracket here we make in house. Um, it has to be done at the assembly of the turbo, so we have them do it for you. The turbo should be clocked, and when I say clocked, the turbine housing and the compressor cover can rotate one to another. Uh, it's already clocked. We uh, sent our manufacturers a jig, and you don't have to touch it, turn it, phase it, anything like that. It's ready to go in a car quick. All right, so what Steve has just showed you all is the stuff that comes, uh, that PRL has packaged for you inside of your turbocharger kit that you purchased. So pretty much, of course, all mine came packaged and we laid it all out here for you guys and Steve explained it. And now what Steve's gonna go over 
he was so kind enough to uh, lay out a bunch of different tools and what specs you need for different parts. So if you need to pause the video for this, go ahead and pause it. All right, Steve, what all do we need? Well, uh, first I'll just touch on this real quick. This is a general guidelines that I uh, made real quick for you guys. Some of them are pulled from the factory Honda manual. Um, some of them not. It's for some of you guys that are, you know, not super uh, mechanically inclined or experienced, uh, just to help you out. Um, I'll just go over it real quick. Um, if you were doing one of our standard pipes to your factory turbocharger, like a down pipe or front pipe, um, the 10 millimeter bolts are going to be about 45 newton meters. And like I said, that's from the factory service manual. So um, take this with a grain of salt. Some of these ones are general guidelines. Um, if you always have a specific question, please try to look up the actual uh, Honda OEM values first. But you know, they'll help you out otherwise. So um, here are most of the tools that you will need. Um, again, I'm a mechanic by trade, so some of you guys might not have exactly all of this. You can definitely get through it with less than this, but this is a good general idea of what you would need. Um, we have your standard uh, sockets here. Uh, eight millimeter, 10, 12, and 14 are the main ones you're gonna need. Uh, same sizes and wrenches. We need a flathead Phillips screwdriver here. Um, some pliers, uh, needle nose or gas slip joint type pliers. Uh, these are coolant line clamps. Most of you guys won't have this, but you might be able to pinch it off or drain your coolant in driveway, garage, whatever you end up doing it at. We have your general 3 8 and half inch ratchets, or I should say quarter inch ratchets here and extensions. And a torque wrench. Um, this is a fancy snap on one. Uh, something from say Harbor Freight or you know General Home Depot Lowe's whatever you have in your area uh, will do the job just fine um, again this is more for you guys that need a little help you know making sure the bolts are the right torque and that's pretty much it uh, I should say this um, the for the oil lines uh, you will need a couple American sizes some metric sizes are close enough uh, you might be able to get by with them but this is half inch, 7 16 and 3 8 and the same size sockets here. Um, half inch is close to 13 millimeter, 7 16 is close to 11, or 11 millimeter, and then 3 8 is sort of on its own. All right, cool. All right, two things that you guys might need are uh, the blue, blue Loctite. Um, there are many removable colors. We recommend a removable style, uh, whether that's green or blue. Red is often permanent, so get yourself a stick or a tube of blue Loctite. And then this is PTFE or a Teflon tape. Um, some of you may have seen it before in general home repair and stuff. Uh, they have Teflon paste and tape. Uh, we prefer tape on our national pipe thread fittings. And then I'm gonna show you guys, uh, explain AN fittings to you real quick. Um, it is not an OEM style uh, fitting, so I might as well touch on it, help you guys out. Um, you can see this is a dash three size. Uh, the dash sizes are actually in sixteenths, so this would be a three sixteenths line. Um, it has a thirty-seven degree flare right here, and this is the sealing surface. So when you're handling these fittings, when you're putting your sockets on, uh, make sure you do not gouge, scratch, or deform this surface at all. Um, a big mistake that. I make is if you use a short socket, a lot of times when you slide this over the fitting, uh, the, the flare will bottom out the socket and damage it. Uh, so try to use deep well sockets or open end wrenches when you do this type of thing. So a little bit further on these fittings is these are the two oil feed line fittings that we supply. This is this larger fitting is the one that goes in the turbocharger. It is an inverted flare. Um, this does not get Teflon or pipe tape or paste, anything. Uh, I'd like to stress that. This does not get any sort of sealant on it. Again, with the 37 degree AN flare, they do not get sealant. These threads, a lot of people like to put pipe tape on these threads and that is very wrong, is improper. The sealing surface, again, is that flare up there. You get no sealant on it. It's just a metal to metal seal. And then the adapter that we make in house here to go onto the block for the oil line, we supply a new in the bag OEM Honda O-ring and filter. That's for you guys, a lot of newer cars, you probably can get away with not using this, but 
Um, as the cars get older, we'd like to see the new stuff in there for you. And I will go over that this junction right here, the smaller dash three fitting in our adapter, this thread is a national pipe thread. It is a tapered thread. It gets Teflon taper paste on it, preferably tape. And then I'll show you the tape here. Um, when you wrap this on the fitting, you want to go in a direction so when you tighten it up and rotate it, that the wrap stays put and doesn't bind up and come unraveled. And when you tape this thread, do not go past, I'd like to save the two, two first threads that you see there. Do not go past that. That way when you screw this in, you have no uh, danger of the Teflon tape splitting off and going into the oil supply and blocking the turbo center section of oil. So I have unpacked our drain fitting here. You're gonna see the O-ring. Before you assemble this on the turbo, you wanna make sure the O-ring is intact, in place. You can push it down, check it. And then that is gonna go onto this face right here, the turbo drain. And these button head bolts, they're eight by one, two, five. They're gonna thread in like that. And then I'm gonna snug this up and then I'll show you the feed line. This is how the drain's gonna look assembled. And then again, watch the ceiling surface here. What I like to do is while I'm handling it, I'll take the fitting that we provided and just loosely, hand tight, snug it up. That'll protect that ceiling surface while we're spinning the turbo around here on the bench. So I'll show you the feed line. Again, this is the larger of the fittings we supply. See the inverted, inverted flare right there and that's gonna go into the turbine housing. I mean, into the center section, I should say, I'm sorry. We have my 9 sixteenths. Uh, you might be able to get a 14 millimeter deep oil to work on that. I'm just gonna slip it down here and snug is fitting up. That's it. So we're gonna do the water lines next. Uh, this is the rear water line that is between the turbo and the cylinder head and then this is going to be the outside one closer to the radiator uh, i'll show you the orientation of the turbo okay so you'll see that the turbocharger is sort of oriented here um, this is going to be the front water line so to speak and that's this guy right here so you're going to take your banjo bolt two crush washers you're going to want to install it like this Then you're gonna wind it in here. And then a little tip is when you tighten the banjo bolt down, you wanna rotate this line almost all the way till it touches. And then pull it back just a little bit. And right here, this space, you wanna give yourself enough space that you can slide the hot pipe silicone on and put a hose clamp around it. So while you're on the bench, maybe even if you're unsure, you can slide this on, rotate it in, pull it back a little bit right there, probably is perfect. Then you're gonna to wanna to tighten this down. Um, that is going to be on our kit right now, a 19 or three quarter socket. And I'm gonna to torque this to 25 newton meters. Uh, not any more than that, you should be good to go. All right, this is the rear coolant line. Um, it's gonna go right here. I'm gonna turn the turbo. What this does, when you install it with the banjo bolt and crush washers, you also have to put a six by one bolt right here into the wastegate bracket. A little bit of holes for uh, manufacturing errors right there. Loosely bolt it all together, torque the banjo bolt, snug up the six millimeter, and you're good. All right, we have it all assembled here. That's the six by one bolt right there, tightened up. And then again, banjo bolt and the two copper crush washers. Um, just to remind you guys, torque it down to 25 newton meters. Not any more than that, that's all you need. All right, here we have the turbine housing outlet bolts. Um, they come in a bag, you will have four extras. This is gonna go into our adapter for the cylinder head. So 
You're only going to use five of them right now. I've already went ahead and put some uh, blue Loctite on them. Um, just a touch on Loctite if you ever never used it before. Um, it's an anaerobic sealant. Basically that's a fancy word to say that it dries in the lack of oxygen. So out in the atmosphere it remains a liquid and then once you torque the bolt or uh, nut down whatever on it, when it seals itself from the atmosphere is actually when it dries and starts to hold the bolt. So a little, little tidbit on that. Um, I'm going to go ahead thread these in and then normally what I like to do is just get a pair of needle nose or something, grip the stud right on the non-threaded portion, just give it a little tweak and that's all you need to keep these in place. Um, if you are a mechanic and have like an actual stud tightening tool, that would also be better. But all right, the next step, what I like to do after you put the water lines on is, this is the bracket for the heat shield. It goes on the compressor cover, so I'll show you guys if you're looking at the turbo here. Um, it's this bolt right near, see the compressor outlet. You wanna go right up to this bolt right here, loosen it, and then you're gonna to wanna to install this. Um, I like to snug it up, but don't crank it down because then once this is on the car, the heat shield will go on. You can align it to the heat shield tighten it down and then that'll be done okay we're gonna do the drain next uh, we already previously installed the uh, the dash 8 fitting right here um, this is a push lock fitting what I've already put a little lube this is seal glide for doing various brake jaws whatever uh, you can use a little grease lithium grease whatever you want just use it sparingly lubricate the nipple and then what you're going to do is put this flat push this hose on all the way till the hose goes into this little rubber grommet right there and you're done. So. All right, this is all installed. You're gonna thread the drain line on. And then I have a dash eight wrench, but you can just use a crescent wrench at home. Um, just be careful not to scratch up the anodizing too bad. What you're going to want to do, if the hose has a natural curve to it, you're going to want to situate it like that and go ahead and tighten it down. And when you install this on the car, uh, we will cut this end to length. Alright, we're going to do the feed line now. Um, I have my half inch and 3 eighths wrench here. What you're going to want to do is see the orientation of the turbo here. It's gonna swoop across the front, so to speak. And I'm just gonna thread this on. And you want to orient it right like that, how everything's nice in line parallel right there. Um, I like to use the 3 8 wrench to hold this part of the fitting straight. And then you'll use the half inch wrench or 13 millimeter, depending on what you have to tighten down the fitting there. So I've unpacked the wastegate actuator. I'm going to show you the orientation of the turbo. Uh, you want to place this right here, like that. See the feed lines right here? This nipple was up. And then I'm going to install just these two nuts on the back side, tighten them down. And then at this point in time, you don't want to do anything else with the actuator. Something will go on here, but uh, don't worry about that right now. Here are the four extra studs left. You're gonna to wanna to thread them again, put a little thread locker on them, thread them into the adapter plate right here that we make. And then after this, I'm gonna show you guys one more thing. We should be good to go over and start tearing the car down. So guys, I'm gonna show you this on the bench. Um, some of you may find it easy to do this on the bench and take this back to the car. Some of you can do this part actually in the car, uh, but it's a little hard to see. So. Um, this is our PRL downpipe, and then you want to put your gasket on. Put this on, and then what I'm going to do is actually start all the nuts by hand and just leave them loose. And I find this a lot easier because down in this area it starts to get buried in the car when you assemble it, and it's a little hard to get the nuts on and tighten them properly. So I'm gonna just do this now. I'm gonna speed this part up. Okay. So. 
I'm just we can talk. Okay. Yeah, we're um, we're pretty ready to go over the door. We're tearing it down. Yeah, this would just be. I'll knock it off whenever you quit talking, and then just. Gotcha. So it's just gonna show you moving really fucking fast. That's fine by me. All right, guys, as always, when you work on your car, the first step, you want to disconnect the battery. And then I'm going to show you guys a general quick overview of how we do it here at PRL and uh, how you guys should assemble the rest of the turbo kit. All right, guys, we've already removed the eight pop clips here and the uh, little panel here. We're going to take this off. And then uh, what we like to do, and I'm going to do it more for filming purposes, but a lot of you guys find it easier. Uh, we're going to remove this upper core support here. Um, you're going to have eight millimeter bolts here and there's a couple underneath that you, it's hard to see. We just removed the uh, upper core support here and I'm going to show you guys where the bolts. Um, there are four bolts, one here, 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 and then one on the back side. It's a little bit buried right here, the little silver guy right there. Same thing on the opposite side and then there's also two plastic pull tabs right under the bumper. You can see that is the hole that it went through before. So that's a little bit buried. Now you have all this room to work with. Makes the kit a lot easier. All right, so Tyler's car here already has our PRL Cobra intake on it. Um, I'm gonna take it off right here. You can leave all of this as it is. So I'm gonna take this silicone piece off here. We're gonna take off this valve. There's a mounting bolt here and here. These clamps on this line. And then I'll show you them once I get the piece off because they're hard to see. I believe there are a number of 12 millimeter headed bolts here um, that hold the intake onto the turbo. So we have the intake pipe off. It's uh, too hard to see on the car, so I'll show you where the bolts are. They're 12 millimeter headed bolts, eight by one, or eight by one, two, five, excuse me. One here. One here, here, and here. And in the car, it's situated like this, so these three are all below, hard to get to. Good. The next stuff we're going to take off is remove the primary oxygen sensor. You will need an O2 wrench, uh, or socket, I should say, for that, since it has the heat shield. And then we're going to take the heat shield off, which is these two 12 mil headed bolts. And then this one right here, no resume. So I just removed the O2 sensor and heat shield here. Uh, we're going to take all the other accessory brackets, so to speak, off the car. We're going to loosen the O2 plug here. Um, I'll show you now. That is the clip. And this one is just flipped. So you have to depress this little clip right here, pull up. And then there's a better picture of the clip right there. And then this will just come apart like that. Off, this off, this off. And then I already went ahead and loosened these two here. Um, these are connected to coil lines, so I'm just going to pull this up and set it up on top of the valve cover for now. So uh, I just took off the factory or uh, Tyler has the PRL front mount, but the hot pipe from the factory turbocharger. And then we're going to replace it down the line with the, the one we provided with the servo kit. But as far as the next step goes, we're going to pull the down pipe off. See, Tyler already has a version 1 PRL kit. Um, we're going to take these four bolts off, and I've already unplugged the secondary O2 sensor. And then we're going to get down below the car and take off the heat shield under tray and uh, the lower connection to the pipe. All right, we're under the car here. You're gonna take these three 10 millimeter bolts off for the exhaust, and then you gotta take these two off for the brackets, and then these two right here. And then we will remove the uh, down pipe completely. All right, guys, we're underneath the car. You're going to have to take this squeeze clamp off of the turbo drain, slide it up, and then above that, I'll move my hand in a second, this is a 10 millimeter 
headed bolt, it's six by one bolt. That's the factory feed line on the block. And then the last thing you're gonna have to do underneath is even up further, you're gonna take, this is a 10 by 125 bolt, it's a 14 millimeter head. You take this one off, and then there's one right here that it's hard to see under the water pipe. That is the last brace on the turbo, and then we'll go back above and then pull the turbo off. All right guys, the next step is to seal off the coolant lines and then take the turbocharger off. Uh, you can do it two different ways. If you have clamps like this for coolant lines, you don't have to drain the coolant. If not, the rad drain is down on the bottom. Uh, take it out, drain your coolant. Uh, I'll show you how I normally do it. So you have two coolant lines on this side. Normally stick them both together, clamp them off. And then I'll take the smaller of my clamps, clamp this line off down here. And then last but not least, this upper line right here. All right guys, so as you can see, Steven's now uh, taking the turbo off. Got all the, the clamps on the, on the coolant lines. How many bolts is on there for the turbo four? Not four. Yeah, that's gonna come out right now. Nice, there you go. Factory turbo is now out. Go over here to the workbench. Boom, there it is. Factory turbo is now out. So we just removed the factory turbo. You wanna go take a cloth, maybe a piece of scotch bright, clean your sealing surface here on the cylinder head. New gasket that we provide in the kit. Put that on. We already pre-installed the studs earlier in our adapter. Put that on. Reuse the factory hardware. I'm gonna tighten that up. I'm gonna bring the new turbo over and hang that on. I have my new gasket for that ready to go here. Uh, remember to torque your adapter flange down here. We're going to torque it to 45 newton meters. That is the same as the uh, factory Honda manual says. And then we'll move forward from there. All right, so Steve has got the actual uh, kit that we uh, we assembled in, in the earlier uh, portion of the video. And now what Steve's going to do is, we're, the moment I've been waiting for, we're actually going to put the turbo uh, back into the uh, into the or onto the motor, I should say. Just be careful sliding it in and right on the studs. There Beautiful. you go. So that's what the new turbo looks like from the PRL kit as it sits right there. And then, of course, we're going to go back through and button everything up. All right, guys, I'm going to give you a quick tip here. Uh, we're going to put the eight millimeter nuts onto our turbocharger kit here and. It's hard to see, but you can sort of see how this stud is pretty much surrounded by the casting. It's a little bit worse off on the back, the lower corner. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is pull the turbo kit slightly forward on the studs like that, just enough thread to get the nut started. Then you're gonna wanna reach down below, start the nut, sort of similar fashion here. Just like that. And then once you get it on a little bit, you can push the turbo back up to the cylinder head in that direction. So I'm just tightening up the downpipe. We left it loose when we assembled it on the engine. You want to go below, and this flange has a little bit of rotation and slop left in it for manufacturing. So make sure you roll the downpipe to meet the uh, front pipe below. Make sure the planes are nice and aligned, and then go ahead and tighten this down. So this is the feed line adapter that we make. Uh, it's a little tight to see up in the car, so I'll just show you outside. You wanna take the brand new supplied O-ring and filter, install that, just like so. Then this is gonna bolt to the block, just like that. Use the supplied Allen screw, don't use the factory screw, or bolt, I should say. And then you're gonna to wanna to lightly Teflon tape this fitting. Remember, one or two threads clean, and then start your Teflon tape. And that's going to thread on like that. 
And then the feed line dash four will just go right on, or dash three should just go right onto there. So I've already uh, held the drain line up to the barb that's on the oil pan. You have to cut it the length. And then I'm gonna slip the provided clamp over it. And then install the hose onto the barb, tighten the clamp, and you're good as far as the feed and drain line now. So we're still underneath the car. We're going to install the new gasket here like that and then I'd like to touch on you guys can see this we'll give you guys a bunch of washers basically what this is is for these brackets when you put these on and tighten this down some irregularities in the casting sometimes does not have a flat surface and you guys might vary you might need one washer no washers three washers depends on some of the manufacturing processes but again space these out here behind this bracket here and the same up here on the other one so we're gonna put the rear of two in uh, final step before we go up top put it up here. and let's get a picture of it in. yep got it all right so back up top you're gonna have to reach down, and there's this lower water line that goes to the water pipe across the front of the engine. You wanna hook that up, do a squeeze clamp, and in here I have our new supplied PRO coolant lines across the top of the motor. I don't wanna actually install this yet, but you can hook the lines back up, just like so. And then in our kit, we supply a new factory line that is very similar to this side. It goes from this point to this point. All right guys, I just pre-installed the squeeze clamps onto the line we provide. You can see it has sort of a curve to it. I'm gonna put that up here. I slip this on just like that. Install your clamps and then like I said, don't actually install it onto the cylinder head yet, but just sort of let it hang out there and that'll give you enough room to put the heat shield on in the next step. Up next is the heat shield. I have the uh, supplied bolts in my hand. I've already aligned this to the heat shield before we start taking the video, tighten this bolt down. We left it loose on the bench and what you're going to want to do, sort of work this down in. Flip the wastegate through, and then go ahead and put these bolts in here, and then you got one here, one over here on the downpipe. So here's the supplied wastegate actuator rod, and then our supplied new C-clip, or E-clip if you will. How you want to set this up is thread the rod on, you want to push the wastegate actuator all the way this way towards the wastegate pod and then what you want to adjust just so it slips on like that and then you want to go one and a half turns in so there's a half one one and a half then snug that down lightly just so it doesn't move you're going to want to get pliers or a wrench of some sort Pull this down over and then clip in the clip. So the only part of the kit you have to modify your stock pieces is for the O2 sensor. Um, what I did was I ended up cutting this pieces together like that. You can sort of see how it lined up before. Cut this off, rounded the edges. It's going to bolt back to where it originally was here and your O2 sensors are going to clip back into it. Next step is going to be the primary O2 sensor. You're going to want to spin it in here, tighten it up, and then personal preference on this, what I like to do is loop the wire back around out of the way, sort of like this. 
I'm going to slip it on here. And then you're going to reach down and grab the rear O2, secondary oxygen sensor. Plug that in. Slip that back onto that bracket. So the next step would be to finally mount the water lines. They're going to go right on the studs on the cylinder head like that. Reinstall your factory shield. You're on your way. This is the hot side pipe silicone. Basically, you're going to want to slip it in onto the compressor outlet and then into your connection to your factory pipe or your PRL front mount kit in the fender well. Next up is we're going to put the inlet on. I've already pre-installed the hose clamp. It's going to slip down in here. Sure like so. Again, pre-install the clamp. Go right on the valve cover like that. So I just installed the blow-off valve into the uh, inlet and the intercooler pipe. You can see the correct orientation here. You can flip it around, so make sure you put it in just like that. So we're going to install the crossover pipe next. You have to put on this bracket first. So what you're going to do is take the supplied bolt and bracket, install it right here, and you're going to want to tighten, not actually tighten this up. Put it finger tight so you can still take it and swivel this around. You don't want to leave it any looser than that. All right, here we have our ceramic coated crossover pipe. It's going to go in similar to this right here. We've got the bolts that we've supplied. You're going to need two six millimeter by one socket head cap screws and then two normal six by one bolts and nuts right here. All right, guys, that's uh, crossover pipe is installed. You have the 10 mil or six millimeter bolts right here. And then that bracket you previously installed, you're able to get an open end 12 millimeter wrench. Just slide it down in here and snug it up. All right, we just switched Tyler. He upgraded from the street to the race. Uh, just upgraded that. And then now we're gonna put the final piece of the puzzle, the last piece of silicone right here. So I'm going to show you guys how to hook up your vacuum lines in a very basic manner for a turbo kit. I've already removed both of the lines off of this, these two nipples here. And then in the back, I've, you don't have to loop this like I just did. I just do it to help keep dirt and stuff out of the uh, solenoid here. But remove the lines that go from here to the factory solenoid. Remove the lines from here that go to the factory intake manifold plenum. And then also I have pulled off this line that goes straight to the bottom of the intake manifold as well. Okay, I've already pre-assembled our uh, part of our vacuum line kit that we give you. This very short piece goes right like that on the T. We're going to reuse the T and this long line right here. What you're going to want to do is Insert this line onto the T and like so. I'm gonna move the clamp down later, but this port goes back to the factory intake manifold bar. Right like this. And then this line from here is going to come over and you can hook it up to either one of these ports here. So I'm gonna trim this to fit and then I'm going to zip tie all this and we'll show you the rest of it. Okay, here I have the factory hose that was back on the solenoid right here. We're going to reuse this for our blow-off valve connection. It's going to go right in here. You can see how that works really well. I'm going to go hook it up now. Okay, I have here is Tyler's boost controller. You may have a different one, different means of boost control, but I'm just going to show you this. We're going to take the last port of the intake manifold that's open, this one right here by the uh, brake booster line. 
We're going to go from here to the last open nipple on this side. It's going to come all the way to here. And then I'm going to install this in line from the hard line right here to the wastegate pod right there. And that sums up all you have to do with the vacuum line. All right, guys, we have just a rough vacuum line set up here for you. Uh, again, this is a manual boost controller. We have the pressure coming from the plenum port here. Comes up into the factory hard lines that go across the valve cover, across. This is the inlet on his particular boost controller. And then it's gonna go straight, loop through here to the wastegate pod right there. All right, guys, we are all done with the turbo kit and hope you guys learned a lot. And we're gonna have Tyler here start his car for the first time. Pretty excited. Let's do it. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up the turbo install. I wanna give a big thanks to Pat for having me here at the shop and a big thanks to Steve uh, here at PRL and then uh, all the team members that, that made this happen and all the blood, sweat, and tears. Thank you guys so much. So uh, the goal for this video was to take you know an average Joe and show them a detailed video from start to finish on how exactly to install uh, your big turbo kit for the 10th gen platform. So hopefully we did a good job and I know the video is a little bit longer than normal but we wanted to go in detail on certain things so when you get to your kit and your parts and you have your part torn apart you guys would know exactly um, how to install that. So Steve did a really good job on um, you know, showing you all what needs to be done and how to do it and certain things. There was um, one custom piece that we had to make and cut and you can do that and that's all uh, completely up to you if you want to do that or not. So once again, want to give a big thank you to everybody here at the PRL uh, team. And um, if you liked today's video, make sure you leave it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And the next video is going to be um, it's going to be us making some pulls on my actual car to see what this turbo does and the, and the numbers. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Peace. Okay, it's rap pack to my pulse flat. We keep it real, no false rap. I got four cars and they all black. Got four bras and they all that. We call that ballin'. Doing this is my calling.